I come from a generation of children, however, who was supposed to be seen and not heard. They don't know anything about that now, right? Right. I couldn't correct them. And whenever I would ask, why are you fighting for freedom? And we already have our freedom. No one could have explained it to them. Not well enough for me to understand it, I guess. But one day I was right down the street, about a couple of blocks. It's a drugstore there today that was there in the 60s called Carter's Drugstore. Carter's had a lunch counter and I wanted to sit at that lunch counter. But my grandmother said I couldn't. She said, colored children, that's what they called us, can't sit at the counter. It didn't stop me from wanting to sit at that counter. Every time I pass by, I see those white kids sitting there licking those ice cream cones and I'd be wishing it was me. This particular day, my grandmother was talking to one of her friends in front of the store. And I was doing what I always do, peeping that window, watching those white kids, wishing it was me. This particular day, my grandmother noticed, and she leaned over my shoulder, and she pointed through the window to the couch. She said, when we get our freedom, you can do that too. I became a freedom fighter that day, because whatever freedom that was, it was the good freedom. And I wanted it, because I wanted to sit at that couch. I started going down to First Baptist Church with my older sisters to the meetings of SNCC, the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. You know, they tried to teach me the principles of nonviolence. I wouldn't have any of that because at my age, at that age, you could only, I could only grasp the one that, um, you know, me hate with love. You know, if I hit you on this side, you turn the other cheek so I can hit you on the other side. And I thought it meant literally. So, I wouldn't have any. All I could envision was my next door neighbor <coughs> slapping me on this side. And I, walked, I turned up the cheek, she slapped me again, and then I walked a little further, and my next neighbor would do the same thing. In 15 minutes, my cheeks would have been like this. No. No. I had told them when they started the non violence training, they put me out the church. My, <laughs> my sisters would lean over and say, go outside, and I get up and I gladly go. <laughs> anyway, I like the marching part, though. They come out the church, and they line up, the youth would line up to go on the march. I'd be so excited, I'd hop in the line, and I'd go with them. I'd just be marching. We'd go up to that courthouse, and they see us coming, and lock the door most, most often. <coughs> they wouldn't let us in. Now, truly, not, most of us were not old enough to register. So we would kneel on the steps and someone would say a prayer to the Creator asking Him to lift the hearts of those evil men so our parents could vote for us until we could vote for ourselves. You know, that got old quickly. Uh, in December of 1964, a letter was written to Dr. King inviting him to sell. Dr. King didn't wake up one morning and say, I'm coming to sell. If you study his uh, campaigns, you know that everywhere there was a campaign, it was already organized. Before he got here, he already knew what the word for voter registration meant. The Dallas County Voters League had done. He already knew what the work that SNCC had been doing. So he chose Selma to be the headquarters for the battle for voting rights. And things really heated up then. Dr. King brought us his lieutenants like Jose Williams and James Orange and Stacy Nearman counties all around us. He sent James Arnold to, in fact, to Perry County. In Perry County, Reverend Orange ran his organized students. It was easier to organize students because their parents worked for the same people who tried to keep us from getting the right to vote. There was a church across from two blocks from the jail. A mass meeting was being held at that church. The children ran into the church and disrupted the meeting and said, you have to do something. They're going to kill you. People in the church decided they would walk down to that jail and walk around it all night long in hopes that their mere presence would save this man's life. When they left the jail, they were attacked by law enforcement officers and brutally beat. 